Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the 3D box tool, which is part of the Inkscape Basics tutorial series. And the 3D box tool is the seventh tool from the top in the tool dialog box. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it can also be activated by pressing Shift F4. Now, the free, I read somewhere some time ago that the 3D box tool was inspired or created from a, free, a, a tool in 3D Max and that helps set the context for the existence and the purpose of this tool. It is an extremely unique tool and is in fact the only tool in Escape that attempts to create a 3D space within the limits or the constraints of the 2D vector program. Inkscape. Now this tool, for this reason, for this reason, this tool is um, also considered complex via newcomers or persons who are using the tool for the first time because of its, um, its different mechanics from what we know for the usual Inkscape object creation tool to work as. And we're going to take a look at the mechanics of it. To help with the explanation of this, I have three circles here and the three circles are colored with different letters X, Y and Z. Now the colors are purposely done. They represent the node segment or the, or the control lines um, for the node segments of the 3D box tool. And the first one is red and that's the X axis representing and that's on your left. The middle one is Y representing the height and that's blue. So the node line is blue for that. And the Z is yellow, which represents the right hand side. And it is a light yellow, which is probably the most difficult to see on the screen. I'll try to make it so that you can see on the screen easier by zooming in. But I have a yellow circle to represent that because it is by default yellow. Now this may conflict conflict with some persons who understand the 3D space said is always the depth space value axis, but in this instance it is the right perspective point. Uh, X is the left and Y represents the height or the depth in this space. It represents the height, sorry, in this space. Um let's get straight into it. Let's look. Yes, you can activate it by clicking it or left clicking it, right clicking it, left, left clicking it, sorry. And um, you can also activate it with Shift F4. So we're going to left click and we're going to draw this box. See what we get. So we've left clicked the box. Oh, and you may have noticed that there's no border on in this document. Um, this is done on purpose. And I'll show you why this is done in a second. So if we create this box once more, let's just shift F4. And we begin to move this around. We start to notice that the movement of the block box is extremely fluid. Almost, uh, and this fluid movement, in terms of what you do with the cursor as you move it around, is the first point that tends to confuse new confuses new users of this tool or beginners in Inkscape and it's because it you it appears that the cursor or the box has no control point for which we can actually form the rest of the object where well, this is not actually true there is a stationary point that controls the object it's just that this object now has other points that control the way the object is formed. So we don't have entirely free flow of the way the object is created because it is controlled by the three perspective points that we mentioned before, the X, Y, and Z. Now we can't see this as we are drawing it, but as we let go, we'll see the nodes come up. You know, so that's the first thing that confuses the users is the way the cursor interacts with the object creation upon creating the first box or on, upon creating your, your, a box using the 3D tool. We should know that there is a center point that the tool operates around. What confuses it also is the, the colors of the shades of the boxes. Now the shades that we see here, which is the, 
the light gray, purple gray, the dark purple gray, and the mid-tone purple gray at the bottom are simply there to help to um, keep into perspective where that where the box is relative to this perspective lines you know and what it does is that it assumes a light source on the left at all times and as you move you can see how the light source you know is showing us how the box is formed within the perspective so it's really about that it's about the it's um, showing how the light source using the light source methodology to show you where the box is in the perspective space these lights these colors here can change you know they don't have to be these colors but they're just there to guide and help you to understand you know the the 3d element of the box within the 2d space not necessarily how the cursor is interacting with the box itself so the box remains an object and if we go to a rectangle tool, we can see what we're used to here. As we drag out, we're used to as we go bottom left, top right, top left, um, top right, bottom right. We used to wherever we click, the box remains um, consistent to that point where we click from, dragging from that point, that pivot point here in the middle where we click from. We're used to that, and this is where the first confusion lies in the way that the cursor seems to interact with the new 3d element and what you need to keep in mind is that in all of this the 3d box is controlled by other points including the points that you have started and created the box from so you have other points that are warping the shape of the box as you move through these points you get different shapes and that will explain the lack of control and also the cursor sort of weirdness when you're dealing with the box. A second thing, you know, that confuses users when they use this 3D box tool is they seem to get different results when they use it. Now, we have a nice box here that's comprehensible here, but you know, when we try to create another box, we get very abstract, um, sort of awkward shapes here that we can't quite comprehend why the shapes are like this so how come we have a nice box here and we have these sort of warped crazy boxes on the left and right almost seems like the tool is unreliable but there's actually a quite simple um, explanation for this it is because the perspective points by default when you create when you use a 3d box to create an object they are snapped to the page border. Now, if we go and we go to file and document properties, or you can also hit control shift D, we're going to show this border now. So come down here and we can toggle to show the border, show off. By default it's on, but I turned it off so that for the purpose of this tutorial. So we're gonna show the border. And now that we see the border, we can see that the X and Z perspectives points are indeed snapped to the left and right um, edges of the box of the border page border respectively and this explains why you get these very warped shapes because now the perspective of the box is relative to how we would see the box via if the perspective points of the box were in these in these positions so this is how we would see the box this is the visual interpretation of the box if our perspective points or vanishing points as we're known were in these two positions so to stop this from happening you know there's a couple of things that you can do you can draw the box within the constraints of the page border or you know when you click out of a box we can simply just move these nodes these nodes are movable and as the Inkscape nodes is snappable also so we can move these perspective nodes so that we have a rider range of perspective so that our boxes look more natural you know across the page and that brings us to the next point the perspective points and we're looking at these vanishing or perspective points you know in terms of what they come as default the x and z by default when you draw the 3d box 
the x and z points that's this x and this z these points are fixed meaning that there isn't indeed a vanishing point they there's a point where the two lines meet the y on the other hand is infinite by default and that means that the lines are parallel they will never meet now the purpose for this is that often enough where the x and z perspective points are are usually in our line of sight and they're easy for us to determine just by looking forward but the height perspective is often very much it's often very very high and difficult to comprehend and difficult to see on first glance because of how high the objects are or how high the perspective vanishing point goes it appears as if it is infinite but there is a vanishing point it's just that it's very very high and we can use things such as clouds and skyscrapers as good examples of this vanishing point being extremely high and because of that it this, uh, there's a more natural feel for the y or the height perspective to be infinite so that's why that one set infinite um, to an infinite perspective or to a completely parallel perspective with the lines of a meet but this can be toggled on and off in Inkscape, and we can see that it's represented by the two lines going and never touching icon and if we toggle this on and off we get different we get the result where we can see that the vanishing points are coming to a a unified point and if we zoom out you know we can see you know where it is here also once the perspective points are infinite we can alter the angle of the perspective points so once they're parallel we can alter them so once this is toggled on we can alter the angle so right now it's 90 degrees Let's change it to 70 just for sake of seeing what's happening. And we can see the perspective is changed. But this is only achievable if the perspective points are infinite. And we can also make the point infinite for the X and the Z in accordance to what we're looking for. <coughs> see, we can toggle these on and off. And we see the effects change. Good. Now these colors are changeable and we're going to go into the middle nodes now to see what they do. So while the X and Z nodes control the way that we view this box in 3D space, you know, simulating as best it can how we would view things using the laws of perspective, the internal nodes here which are the dimension nodes control the form, the actual form and shape, length, width and height of the box itself. So these nodes may appear to change these attributes, but really what their aim is, is to simulate how we view the box from whatever angle that we're at. Versus these nodes which are designed to control the actual dimensions of the box that we're viewing. So we can move this to increase the length of the box and you know, or you know we can use this to increase the width of the box and we can use these nodes to increase the height of the box and they're all conveniently placed at the vertices of the 3d box so that it's easy for us to comprehend what part of the box we're actually editing good so they control the dimensions and these nodes control the perspective for which we see the box and naturally they're not going to see one for the y because there is no connecting point for the y at this moment because it's parallel it's infinite but if we change it from infinite then we can also edit the node which is the vanishing point of this pers of that perspective axis good so when we draw Oh, and these being nodes, Inkscape nodes, we can snap them to wherever we want to snap them also. We don't necessarily have to pull them. We can activate the snap tool and snap these to anything. So they're snappable, you know, being Inkscape nodes. The next thing that we can look at is when we create a new 3D box tool and we have a pre-existing one, the new 3D box that we create using the tool automatically uses the perspective points of the previous box. So if we're gonna draw another box here, 
and draw another one here you know and even draw one here and click out we can see that all of them operate under the same perspective points and if we click them we can see they're all in the same points here all using the same perspective points they don't change and that's it lends itself to what this tool would most likely be used for which is for buildings and constructions and uh, where you would need the perspective points to be the same now you can alter the individual perspective points to get different effects but this is aimed to help you when creating landscape scenes with lots of 3d boxes such as a a city with skyscrapers and tall buildings and businesses and such with lots of architecture box architecture and helps to keep everything uniform this is also very good for when you want to create construction lines for the building of a landscape so you may not want to use the box specifically for the landforms but you may want them to help you to guide to draw these landforms and that is where this tool also shines very very well mm -hmm. so for the construction of landscape images uh, that involve buildings and for the construction of lands landscape construction lines to help you to build um, a landscape scene or guide you in the in the creation of a landscape sch um, scheme this tool is very very effective and these are the things I would suggest that you would use it for and this concludes the 3d box tool in Inkscape I hope you learned something from this tutorial um, if you did give it a thumbs up you know subscribe but until we see each other again with another tutorial get up and design a new dawn later